It's day five. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> or T G T G I F. Yep, yep. We got, through the week. we got through the week. We did, we did, mm -hmm. and we're heading into the very last day of Mystery Quilt. I saw or the first part of Mystery Quilt, I should say. We haven't even really started the Mystery Quilt yet. Um, so. I would love it if you guys would let us know what day has been the most helpful for you. So we started with like, what is this thing called mystery quilt and stitching a block was day one. And then day two, we did trimming and assembly. Day three was picking fabric. Um, day four was FAQs and file access. And today we're talking about how to prepare for the mystery quilt. Um, Linda's got some fabric cutting tips and all that good stuff today. Day three. Yep. Day three. Looks like day three was a hit. That's awesome. Okay. So we've got Linda back today and she is awesome. And she's the one that's going to be teaching your classes. Um, and we, I've been texting you, you know, mm -hmm. you know, lots of questions. Yeah. Yep. throughout the week every time i see a question i'm not sure the answer of and it's been it's been fun you guys have had wonderful questions and yesterday linda i know you were busy doing other things but i asked how many i told them to drop a number if they are brand new to hoop sisters and decided to become a mystery quilter and there were several so oh, good, good. So very we have to impress them then we have to impress them you got to bring your a game okay, okay. <laughs> All right. So do you want to just jump in and get started or do you sure. want me to show some shops? Uh, yeah, go ahead and show the shops. Okay. First. Let's, let's make sure the shops are known because a lot uh, of people have called me and I do appreciate that, but we're all over the country. So that's we, great. We are. And so we have the whole list and we have one over this list every day this week. We're going to go over it again right now. I do have a new addition, which doesn't surprise me at all because they're a very active Hoop Sister shop. And that is Super Stitch. Super Stitch. Of Super course. Stitch. Yes. <laughs> Northeast Pennsylvania. They're very active with Hoop Sisters. So we should have known. We should have known that they that should have been on the list. <laughs> um, but we got Yankee Quilter. We've got Quilter's Yard, Calico Cats. Um, Kathy's Quilt Studio, Super Stitch, The Quilted Nest, Sewing Concepts, So Crazy, Raybon, a and White. Those are all here in the States. We also have in Canada, um, we have Snip and Stitch. They're in British Columbia. We also have in Ontario, we have Heather Bell's Sewing Studio. Heather's very active as well. She's got tons of good stuff coming in. Um, and Cherished Pieces, they're a new shop for us doing some cool things up in Ontario, Canada as well. Um, so hopefully I didn't miss anyone. I kind of hopped around on that list. But <laughs> if you are if you have one of these as your local quilt shop, or even if they're not extremely local, maybe within an hour, um, hook, hook up with them and get their affiliate link. And you can still participate in our mystery quilt through that shop. And they will earn some fun rewards that way. So um, if you don't have a shop near you, it's okay. We've got Nina in the comments and I'll ask her to drop that order link, which I also should mention today's a big day because not only is it Friday for our work watchers, woohoo, come on weekend. Uh, <laughs> it's also the very last day of our incredible promotions, which we will talk more about um, today. So now it's kind of the time if you want the best deal today, by the end of day is the time to commit. So, all right, Linda, I'm going to kick it over to you because that's why they're here. They want to know what you got going on today. I got stuff going on. Today. <laughs> you want me to put your demo cam in? Yes, please. That'd be great. Okay. okay. So uh, by now, I'm assuming all of you have gotten the fabric and thread key. And Sarah and Aubrey went through some of this with fabric um, already. So, but we'll kind of cover it quickly, what's on it. The first page of the fabric and thread key, it does give you some hints for thread. It gives you um, your miscellaneous threads that you need. I think you all know you only need one quilting thread for this quilt, which is very unusual for us. Um, but it's, you know, we got to switch it up once in a while and do something different. It and it tells you how much battleizer you 
two, page two and page three, um, it depends on what size block you're doing. I think I froze a little bit, didn't I? You did a little bit. Maybe not. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of a lag here. Um, <clears throat> so this is So Linda, I think we're having trouble connecting to you. So I'm going to I'm going to go back to my slides. Uh, Nina or somebody, if somebody could text Linda and let her know that we cannot hear her right now, but I think she's going to pop back in here. It looks like, there we go. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try this again. Yeah. I, I hope we can get through today. Um, so this, this is page two of your fabric and thread key, and this is for the six inch blocks and it will show you your fabric one, your fabric two fabric three and four. Right below it, it'll show you the yardage. Um, up here at the very top, it'll say fabric one is your background fabric. It'll tell you how many strips to cut and how many to cross cut. So for fabric one, you need 22 squares and the size will depend on if you're doing a six inch or eight inch. So you need to refer to your cutting chart. It also tells you way up at the top how much backing fabric that you need. Um, it'll also tell you over here on the left side, it'll say six inch blocks, approximate finish size, um, WOF equals width of fabric. And then there's a little key for cut in half diagonally. So hopefully you can see that little square, the little triangles where it's a square, we cut it in half diagonally. So that's what this means. And then as you go down, it'll say week one, week two, week three, and week four. So Aubrey has, um, you can bring those up, Aubrey, those things that we made for them. With yeah, the big so hint. this is week one <laughs> with the big hint in it. So you can, where are these in the file section of Facebook, right? Oh, I haven't posted these yet. I will post these. Okay, okay. I so posted these, the, find the video. Okay, I'll post these right when we're done. Okay. In the file section of Facebook, and if I'm not right, Aubrey can correct me, but it'll say week one, week two, week three, week four. It'll say how many piece blocks you make that week and how many quilted blocks you make that week. So the most blocks you make in one week is only 11, and half of them, five of them, are pieced, and the other, the rest are just quilted. So they stitch out very quickly. And yesterday I saw someone asked how many stitches like what's the stitch count on the blocks and um, she specifically asked for six inch but i went ahead and looked up both um and i i just kind of guessed at which block had the most stitching i'm not going to tell you the name of it because it's a mystery but <laughs> i would say six inch is going to be under six thousand stitches and eight inch will be at just over seven thousand stitches so they're not real stitch intensive so nice. your quilt will be nice and soft and quilty-like when it's finished. So I will also ask Nina to put those documents that we just had up on screen in the files for Mystery Quilt. So if you are oh, not, good. I saw someone said they're not on Facebook. So if you're participating in the Mystery Quilt, you can access those through your files. So we will post them in Facebook and we will get them in the files um, probably by four o'clock today, Eastern Perfect. time. Perfect. Perfect. So on your fabric and thread key, um, we've got, as we come down, it'll say week one. And as you come across, it'll say fabric one. And it'll tell you to cut two, uh, this is just the six inch, two three inch by width of fabric. And then it'll tell you to cross cut into 23 inch squares. So for week one, you'll go all the way across cutting, preparing all your fabrics, one, two, three, and four plus your background fabrics. And then what I recommend you do is once you get all of these cut is to put them in, I've got them in a Ziploc bag or maybe a sheet protector. You can print these off <clears throat> and you can put your fabrics inside. So do that for week one, all the way through week four. And if you're not really sure what I mean by this little diagram right here, I just have a square 
you'll cut whatever size square it tells you to cut. And then basically we're just gonna cut it in half diagonally. So you can take your trimmer by George. We do have a 45 degree line on the trimmer by George. And you can put that at the very bottom of your square and then your corners will line up. And then you just cut it in half diagonally. So that's what that little symbol means. So for example, week two, as we go across for fabric one, you need to cut two, two and a half by width of fabric. Then you cross cut those into two and a half inch squares and then you diagonal cut them again. So you end up with six of these little triangles that I just cut. And you just follow down. And at the bottom of week two, it says save remaining fabrics because you will have some leftover fabrics from all these cuts. So you're just gonna hang on to them because you'll do something with them when week two rolls around. So do week two, put them week two and put them in your little bag for your sheet protectors. And you'll just continue on week three and week four. Put everything all in little bags so you are ready to go. So when you get your files, you can just sit down and sew. Now at the very bottom, it'll say optional wool. So if you've not done our things before and you don't know what we mean by optional wool, um, we usually start our blocks the first two steps the first step is a placement stitch. The second step is to add your optional wool. And what you do is you cut your wool batting. You cut your wool batting into whatever size square it says to cut it. And then you prep it. And Aubrey just played or just posted a video on how to prep this. You prep it with an iron so that your edges are nicely pressed. And you'll notice They'll say optional wool for week one. I need 15 two inch by six inch and I need five six inch squares. So here's my two by six and here is my six inch square. So you can also get that all prepped and ready to go and you can put it in your little bag or your folder and you're ready to go for each week. I love so that, I, that you can have, just prepare. Yeah, then I have it broken down weeks one through week four. I also saw a question yesterday. They were asking about fabric two. It says one yard, hopefully you can see it, one yard and a half a yard is the binding. Down here it says, the little asterisk says, binding can be any color, any color of your choosing, but we chose fabric two. Um, so this one yard includes the half a yard of binding. So you can, if you want a different color, you can just add a different color, but you only need a half a yard. So while we're talking about wool, can I interrupt you? Sure. Okay, so a couple questions on wool. These are frequently asked questions. So I know you, we know the answer, we'll share it with you. Um, <laughs> Number one is what can you use instead of wool? And then someone also asked, what is the optional wool for? So what you can use instead of wool, this happens to be a quilter's dream puff, which is a polyester. So if you have an allergy to wool, or sometimes um, the puff is white, the wool can have a slightly yellow tinge to it. So if you're using white fabric, sometimes it's nice to use the puff because then you have white underneath. And what it's used for is we hoop the battleizer, we stitch a placement stitch, then we place the wool over it, and then it does a tack down stitch. And it just adds extra loft to your quilt. So the quilt behind me, Aubrey, if you could bring me up. Yes, ma'am. This quilt is actually, the wool is under it. So you can really see the, the dimension from the quilting even this far away. So that's what the wool is used for. We do have wool on our website too. I saw that question. And you can, I, you said something about bamboo. It, you can mm -hmm. use it. Sure. Yep. Any good quality puffy stuff is perfect for this. Okay, Linda, I have starred a bunch of comments that I'm noticing. Okay. Can you see those from where you are? Or do you want me to read them to you? Let's see. Okay, what can we use instead of wool? We answered that. Can we use cotton batting instead of wool? I think the cotton batting will be too dense. The cotton batting is going to have the same consistency as the battleizer, and I think it'll be too dense. I don't think that will work. I think you need something 
that's really fluffy. Where's my camera? Really fluffy and soft. Uh, what is what is the optional wool for? I believe that we answered that one. It's to give it more loft. Um, if we got fabric from you, does it say somewhere which is fabric two, three, and four? Did you get fabric from us? We usually do label it when you get it from us. So well, answer my question, Sandra. Did you get it from us? I'm sure we did. Um, we usually you take the fabric and thread key. Yeah. And and I think that there's a paper that would have been inside of it that says Oh, it. the Hoop Sisters kits were definitely yes. there was a color key in there. And yes. it was it was actually, I think it was this. Oh, my printer didn't print really well. I think it was this. Yeah, it was something very like close it? to that. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh can we use the Accu quilt cutter system to cut out the blocks? Why not? Yeah. We tell you what size to cut. So if you have the, the dies for that, you can definitely do that. Um, when you say piece blocks, are they pieced in the embroidery hoop? Yes, they are. <laughs> or mm -hmm. literally pieced separately on a sewing machine. So they are pieced in the embroidery hoop. There's one, there, I believe it's one week where we do just a little bit of strip piecing, but then we take that strip piecing and piece it in the hoop. Just oh. clearing some of these out. <laughs> okay. Is is the backing fabric amount at the top of the cutting chart part of the two yards needed for fabric one? No, backing fabric is separate from background. I think that's what you said. I mean, is the backing fabric amount at the top of the cutting chart part of the two yards needed for fabric one? Backing and fabric one are two different fabrics. One goes on the back of the quilt. This is the backing. And then fabric one is the background. So those are two different fabrics. Okay. Which gives more loft, wool or poly? I find them equal. I think they both have the same amount of loft. And do you prep polyester or bamboo the same as wool? I definitely do the polyester the same. I've honestly never used bamboo, so you'll have to give it a test. I, I would think it would still kind of give it that little thin pressed edge that we're looking for. And the reason we do this is so that your foot doesn't get caught in that fluffy wool. If it's just cut, here I have a piece that's just cut. You can see how thick it is, mm -hmm. how, how thick that edge is. But when you prep your edge, it's nice and nice and thin, so your foot doesn't get caught in it. That's the only reason we do it. Okay. So you need to cut 15 2 by 6 and 5 6 by 6. Linda, you got to give me a clue what you're talking about. Where you're talking. I'm not sure where you're looking at. So I, I don't want to answer that question until I you can clarify. Yeah. Um, don't understand why it says optional wool than crib size. So the crib size is the size wool you need. If you know when you're buying your bagging or your batting packaged, you get crib, and that would be the six inch block, and then you cut it down to the small pieces. Okay, I think I answered what is crib size on the wool batting key. That means the size batting that you purchase. On the eight inch. It says twin because you need more. So crib is for six and twin size batting is for the eight inch. Did not find fabric requirements for backing. So originally uh, we were missing that. So you could go and re-download the fabric and thread key because we did add the backing fabric to it. Um, I'm so anxious to see how this is going to turn out. It's going to turn out great. <laughs> 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 oh, and Darlene says she had her foot get caught and it wasn't pretty. It, it's not pretty. And we don't want that to happen to you and your machines. I've actually seen where the wool was fluffy and it, the machine is sewing along and the wool got over the top of the foot and it sewed the foot to the wool. You don't want to do that. So that's why we prep the wool for you. Do you use a protective ironing sheet to press the edges of the wool? If you look at the 
video that we posted, you can either use an ironing sheet or I actually used a piece of paper folded in half and then put that right on the edge of the wool. I just took my paper, there's a little scrap of paper, and I just placed it on the edge of the wool and put my iron right on top of the paper. It kind of does the same thing as a like a pressing sheet, so that works really well. It keeps the iron from touching it directly and maybe melting a little bit and getting stuff on the bottom of your iron. Uh, okay. What kind of batting do you use when doing quilting in the back? So we're going we're to come back to that. Uh, fabric number one is the backing and fabric two is the background. No, fabric one is the background. Fabric two and three and four are just fabric two and three and four. Backing is a completely different fabric. Does that make sense, Aubrey? To I you? think so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. When and you then, start throwing out numbers, I'm like, I got to look at it. <laughs> at the top of the fabric and thread key, fabric one is background right here. Up here, it says backing fabric. Those are two different things. So at this sample, this is my background. My backing is here. They're not the same fabric. Yeah. What is cross cut? That's a good question. So when you cut a strip of fabric, like for example, on the six inch under fabric one, it says to cut two, three inch by width of fabric strips. You have two strips. A cross cut is when you cut that three inch strip into three inch blocks. So you're cutting across the strip to create, on this case, 23 inch squares. Awesome. Uh, I also just noticed that we have someone from Turkey, Germany. I believe I saw wow. France. So <laughs> we're reaching a lot of different countries. What about using parchment paper, Marion said? Yeah. I'm assuming she's referring to the wool and absolutely yeah. Andy uses that. For yeah. sure you can use that. Okay, I, so parchment paper is in my kitchen, which is downstairs, and I always got paper up here, so I use that. <laughs> yeah, and here's an here's an interesting thing too. So we've got all these countries watching, and I think they call certain things different words. So Carmen pointed out, and I believe Carmen's in Canada said cross cut can also be called sub cut. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it, there you go. I've seen that as well. So sub cut, cross cut, same thing. Okay, cool. <laughs> Roberta uses a paper towel. Yeah, anything would be great. Okay. Anything that doesn't melt, you should put under your iron on the very edge of it. There you go. So we had some backing questions. Should we talk about that? Yes. Okay. So this quilt is designed to have a one piece back. So that's one piece of fabric that's going to cover the entire back after you get all your blocks done and sewn together we will put one piece of fabric on the back. There's an option that you can do an edge to edge quilting on it. And you said you posted a little hint on that, a picture with a hint. Well, we have shared a sneak peek in emails to those who are registered and you can see a portion of it, but they probably wouldn't even know that it's the back because it's amazing. So. You might want to look again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's, it's a, you can do this optional backing where you take your backing fabric and I layer, we had a question earlier about what batting to use for the back. Um, you can use the very thinnest batting that you can find, the very, very thinnest. I prefer like a flannel because it's even thinner. And I like to have a little bit of something over the top of my backing fabric to give it, so the stitches have something to hold on to. And then what you do is you hoop, 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 hoop all the way across and all the way down your quilt and you get a really pretty design that relates to the front of the quilt on the back and then you can put the two wrong sides together stitch in the ditch and use your serpentine stitch by stitching in the ditch and then bind it so that's how it's put together and i think a couple days ago somebody asked do i use a walking foot to do that i do because you've got your quilt top you've got your quilt back Anytime you have layers, a walking foot is a good thing to use. And I know yesterday we got a lot of questions about when are, so you just talked about it there, but you have basically a week live class where you're going to talk, walk them through this, correct? Right. Yeah. Week five. So, week week five. five. <laughs> <laughs> 
week five, we'll put it together. We'll do the backing and then we'll be done. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've got a couple things to share. Is it now a good time? Yep. And you can keep looking at these questions, Linda, because they're still coming in. And I'm and okay. if you want to star some, um, okay. well, well, I jump in over here. Um, just a I'll let you do those before I mention the next thing. Otherwise, the thing will fill up with uh, fill up with comments. But for the promotions mm -hmm. for Mystery Quilt, we have gone live every day this week. And today's kind of decision day, right? So we're at the point where the promotions are going to come to an end tonight at midnight. I can't believe this week is almost over. So I just wanted to do a quick recap because what I have learned throughout this week is somebody is always joining us for the first time. <laughs> so mm -hmm. while this is going to be a quick recap for some of you, just know um, we do have some new people in the comments. So what's included? Well, you do have that fabric and thread key that is in with your download right now. Once you order it, it's also in our Facebook group. Um, we also are going to have five sets of weekly files plus step-by-step -step written instructions. So each week for five weeks, beginning May 29th, mm -hmm. and then every Wednesday after, you're going to get a little bit more and a little bit more. And we showed a pretty big clue today when we were when she's talking about the prep and putting each of your cuts in um, the bag, it said how many blocks and what kind of block it was. So if you were paying attention. Um, and then this also includes six inch and eight inch block sizes. So two block sizes will come in with your download. Um, it's also multi-formatted. So no matter what embroidery machine brand you love, we've got your format in there. And then Linda's also going to be coming live um, each of those Wednesdays with live class instructions and the reveal. So you're going to have Linda, who has been teaching and owning, she's owned a local quilt shop for 35 years. She knows what she's doing. She's going to be here to walk you through it. And then we have talked a little bit about edge to edge, the one of the backing options that is included. Um, we She actually did that for the barn quilt in January, and it went over really, really well. It's really beautiful. So it's an option and it, but it is included in everyone's. Okay. Um, I'm going to shoot the dates up here on the screen real quick. Just know everything kicks off May 29th. And if you are mystery quilter, meaning you purchased yours before then you're going to get all the email reminders. You're going to get the live video instruction replay in your email and all sorts of good things. So we will put your weekly files in your online account by 10 AM Eastern. Um, each of the days on screen, and then we'll be live again to walk you through it, okay? All right. Now, this is what's going to expire at midnight. So now's a really good time, if you're thinking about it at all, to get the best value, most, most bang for your buck. Um, if you add the mystery quilt design, which is download only, to your cart, and then one of these types of battleizers, you're going to get 10% off, plus you're going to get that amazing bonus that you see on screen that Linda actually stitched a little bit of on Monday. So um, check your email for recap emails because we did a lot this week. And if you are international and you don't want to pay to get the battleizer sent to you or, or you live somewhere very remote that we can't ship it to you, um, <clears throat> then you can just put the design in your cart and some other downloads around $33.99, and you're going to get the bonus in there that way. So we talked a little bit about that yesterday, so check back in with that video. Um, now, this is also a huge thing that we never have ever done before, and this is going away tonight. We still have supplies. Believe it or not, Linda, we still have some of these. I know. I, I checked yesterday, and we do. <laughs> Yeah, we had we had a lot of scissors. <laughs> we did, um, which is your which is works out great for you guys, right? Because we are giving away a free pair of our hoop scissors minis. They're fantastic. They have a nice offset handle to make trimming in the hoop super easy. Um, nice pointed tip to it. And today is the very last day. If your cart reaches one hundred and forty nine dollars or more. We are going to be also shipping you a free hoop scissors mini, which is $25 value. So it's an awesome, awesome gift. 
And not only that, today is also the last day if you are within the United States to take advantage of our free shipping offer, which is on orders over $199. Again, this is going bye-bye as of tonight at midnight. So I hope you guys have been paying attention and you're ready to make your decision. Um, okay. Any questions that you want to answer before we do our giveaway? Because that yeah. is next. I got them. I got them all started over here. Okay. So, um, the first one isn't a question. It's just a nice comment from Rhonda. She said, I'm amazing answering all these questions so calmly. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. You know that. what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and Sandra says, are you suggesting we cut all four weeks now? Yeah, do it. Get it all out of the way. It doesn't take that long. Then it's all organized. You don't have to pull out your fabric 15 times. You know, you can pull out fabric one and just cut all your fabric ones, put them into piles. Works out great. You um, can do that and, and stitch then your Diane bonus. Diane asked, do you have any long arm files for background backing quilting? No, we do not. Do, yeah, exactly. Um, we do not have any long arm files at this time. At some point, um, I might consider doing that, but at this point, we do not. And then Linda's asking, I think I'm going to clarify for her. Um, from fabric one background, it says to cut four, seven by width, seven inch by width of fabric at the top of the chart. And then in addition to the fabric one for week one, yes, all the fabric ones for every week are listed in the little column here, all right here. You're going to do that in addition to those squares that I asked you to cut here at the top. And just as a little hint, remember the piece blocks and the quilted blocks? The squares are the quilted blocks. There you go. Da, 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 da. <laughs> um, and Marion says, what about, about what size hoop do you use for the edge to edge on the back? So that's going to depend on what size you pick. They're pre it's pretty much going to be the same hoop you use for your prompt blocks because I sized it so that it'll fit that size hoop for you. So the six inch square and the eight inch square. So we won't outsize you for the hoop. So you'll know that when you get it. How wide do you set the serpentine stitch when stitching in the ditch from Mary? Um, I just call it my serpentine and use it the way it comes up. I don't change the settings at all. I think mine is, I can't remember if it's seven millimeter or nine millimeter maybe. Um, I just use the size that it comes up. And Elaine says, where are the videos posted? So I think she may be talking about the wool prep video. Okay. I will show where they are in Facebook. I just put it in somewhere special in Facebook, which I will show everyone whenever, um, probably towards the end. Okay. And uh, I'll also send it in. If you registered the recap email, we'll have a link to it as well. It's also on YouTube. So if you just search on YouTube, you can find it too. Okay. Jan says, can you machine wash your finished quilt? Absolutely. Um, I machine wash mine. Um, Annie does it a little differently than I do. I machine wash them. And then, but sometimes Annie does way bigger quilts than these and mine aren't that big. Then I throw mine in the dryer for maybe 10 minutes or so. And I just kind of fluff it up a little bit. And then I like to lay it out on, in a, on a clean floor or a carpet or somewhere, or maybe on a spare bed where it can just kind of be blocked, just lay it out nice and flat. And I usually flip it over like the next morning and then by that afternoon it's dry. So that's how I like to do it. You can dry it all the way, but we like, we like our quilts because we sell them to you. We want them to look new. We don't want them to look like a washed and dried quilt, like a used quilt. So we do not put them in the dryer for too long. Okay. How dense is the polyester? I think you're talking about the batting and it looks dense when it's not pressed, but this is the fluffiest stuff ever. This is really, really fluffy. I would not call it dense at all. I would call battleizer dense. If you are familiar with the battleizer, that's definitely dense because that has scrim in it so that it'll stand up to your stitching. But the wool or the poly is very light and fluffy. And Brenda says, I jumped in and bought the Mystery Quilt Designs and Battleizer yesterday. 
my first Hoop Sisters mystery quilt picked my fabrics too. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to hear that. And let's see. I'm kind of losing it here. Sorry. That's <laughs> okay. probably my fault. I'm trying to make <laughs> clean it up. <laughs> Knock it off. I know. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> and Deb says, on the fabric guide for the spring group of fabrics... It suggested white for thread. Would that be correct if you want the designs to stand out? Okay, well, white is if the thread is kind of interesting. If you want your, there's quite a bit of background quilted on here. If you want your quilting to stand out on the white, choose a different color. I think it would be beautiful in a different color. Um, I made one sample where my quilting on my background fabric was definitely a high contrast. The one I'm going to do for the mystery quilt classes is going to be the same color. So if you prefer to have that stand out a little bit on that white, go ahead and change it up. I think that would be cool. And Deborah says, I bought the pattern already. Can I add to the order to get the bonus? That's an Aubrey question. Yes, ma'am. What you should do is call or email. Well, call, call Nina. Because if you're going to add, she'll probably help you get it placed over the phone. Her customer service line is right there on the screen, and she will get you taken care of. Okay. Sandy says, this is my first mystery quilt. Looking forward to it. Well, we're looking forward to seeing what you do, Sandy. And Cindy says, I got my fabric kit, battleizer, and scissors today. I'm ready to cut. Oh, now you know what to do. Yeah. I, I would definitely get download these. These are handy. So it'll help you keep organized. Okay, let's see. Mark, Mark and Tammy. In fabric one, week two, it has two 21, I think it says 21 and a half by width, cross cut to three. Oh boy. <laughs> maybe you should, e <laughs> maybe Mark and Tammy should email Nina so we can like see the spaces in those numbers <laughs> yeah I, I i think mark and tammy please email me linda at hoopsisters.com your question because i'm like you say i don't see spaces I'm right what i'm reading okay so email me and then um i can post the answer to the question in this thread in case somebody else has the same question I'm going to pop her email up because her name is not spelled how you think. <laughs> there you go. L-Y-N-D-A at hoopsisters.com. You can thank my mother for that. <laughs> <laughs> and Joan. Joan's a winner, right? I think Joan won the other day. Yeah. Is that cover sheet for the bags to save everything? It's printable in advance. Yes. You, they're, you're gonna, you have them in the file so you can print these up. And then you can save them in a Ziploc bag or one of those sheet protector plastic things. Is and those right. I have to put in there today. Um, okay. They're not there yet. But they're, they're not there, there yet. They're going to be in there um, right as soon as we get off here. We will get them put in the files and on Facebook. Okay. Vera says, was there an update to the cutting for preparation? There was an update on day one before we even started. Mm -hmm. um, one of our uh, wonderful people noticed that I was missing the backing fabric. So you can re-download the fabric and thread key because I was missing yardage for backing fabric. It's so hard to find the camera. <laughs> up, here, up here at the top. Yeah. I completely forgot to put the backing fabric on there. And then Mary says, you also add puffy batting to the piece blocks. If you're going to add batting to any of them, you add them to all of them. You either do them all or you do none. So it's up to you. Okay. I think that's it, right? Unless there's more. I haven't starred any more, but there are more. Depends on how much more you want to get into. Let's see. There, I start a couple more. Do I spray base the flannel for the back? I don't spray base the flannel um, because the flannel tends to grab the fabric. So I don't 
I don't really like to do spray basting. It makes a mess and it stinks. <laughs> so I just like smooth it out really good and the, the flannel kind of gram, grabs it. What can you use if you can't get batalizer? So a batalizer, if you can't get it, it's a batting stabilizer combination. And we do need a stabilizer in oh, with the batting because regular batting is just not strong enough to withstand all to, the hooping as well as the stitching on there. So hopefully you can find something that will do that for you. I think that was it, right? Oh, there's a couple more. Linda, still confused about the quilting for the quilt versus adding the edge to edge. Okay, so the edge to edge is only the back. It's not the front mm -hmm. of the quilt. Only the back. Mm -hmm. And it's optional. You don't add the edge to edge to the front. Typically, when an embroiderer, machine embroiderer, buys edge to edge patterns, you're putting that on the front of your quilt. Our designs come with it already on. So this is to add a little something extra to the back. That's all that is. What do I mean by backing fabric? I mean the fabric that goes on the back of the quilt. This is my backing fabric, whatever I put behind the quilt. Any more, Aubrey? We, and we also have an entire, just as you were explaining the E2E, -E, I saw someone else asked a very similar question. Um, so just know that we have basically all of week five, when you go live, that's what you're doing, um, is the edge to edge, correct? Can you hear me, Linda? Right. Okay. <laughs> I think there's a delay. All right. All right. If we're doing edge to edge, wouldn't it all wouldn't it be all one piece? The edge to edge for the back is yep. on one piece of fabric. Yes, and it's just on the back, guys. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I think we should do the giveaway. What do you think? Do you have anything else you want to share? Yes. Okay. No, I'm I think I think we're good. All right. I'm going to share my screen. And we will pick a, this 